Let's get ready to mortgage. He is the prince of programs, guru of guidelines, master of matrixes. He puts the fun in funding. Please welcome Mark, Mr. Mortgage, I tell. All right, all right. My name is Mark Itell. I host the Mr. Mortgage Show. Dom, my producer, and I do this every week right here at this time on this station. So thank you so much for joining us. And you, my friends, are in the right place if you've got questions regarding real estate and mortgages. I mean, the news has been crazy out there. Is it a good time to buy? Is it a good time to sell? What's the Federal Reserve doing to interest rates? What's that going to do to the market? Are we in a bubble? I mean, listen, excuse me, you're reading the headlines, we're reading the headlines, we're getting the questions, and we're going to do our best to get you the information that you need to make better mortgage and real estate decisions for you and your family. So settle in for the next hour. We're going to dig into all of those topics. We're going to get to your questions, and we're going to cover so, so much more. So yes, you are in the right place if you've got questions, and we are going to do our very best to get you those answers. So Um, Yeah, let's dive right in. Another crazy week in the world of mortgage and real estate. We're all seeing the headlines. Um, Wednesday, the Federal Reserve came out. They raised the overnight rate by half a point. And it was super interesting, right? I think there was some fear that he was going to do a more aggressive move. So after the move was announced, the market responded really favorably. It was quite interesting. The stock market was up. Interest rates in the mortgage world were slightly down on the news, which was a surprise to a lot of people. Um, But then Thursday, everybody woke up with that hangover and got back to reality and the bottom fell out of the market on Thursday and rates moved right back to where they were uh, Wednesday morning. So kind of like the little kid who falls and doesn't realize that that it hurt and he stands up and he's kind of shaking it off and then he winces. So the day after effect. Um, we kind of went back to reality. So the good news is we kind of have seemed to fa- find a bit of a, a range for interest rates. I mean, we're not in the twos and threes, but we're, we got a stronghold in the fives. So, and the reality is that's, um, that's cheap money. You hear me say it all the time. You hear me all the time talking about finding the opportunity through the headlines. So that's where we are. Um, not a lot of, of real meaty news outside of that, a ton of headlines, a ton of people running around saying the sky is falling. Uh, it's it's quite interesting. The news has become like a, like a horror movie trailer, right? They've It's just all of the scare tactics. It really is starting to drive me nuts. I don't remember how many, uh, or I don't know how many of you are old enough to remember that movie Airplane. And there was a scene in Airplane where Lloyd Bridges was walking through the uh, airport and he's slapping everybody that's coming up to him. The Harry Krishna tries to give him a flower. That's kind of how I feel as I'm scrolling through my feed on a daily basis. And there's one more headline telling me that, um, you know, the real estate market is going to burn to the ground and just, just crazy stuff out there. Most of you who listen to the show know I've been around for a long time. I've seen a lot of swings in the market and I really believe that we're not in a bubble burst situation. I just got to tell you that. Um, I talk about it all the time. Go to the Facebook page, uh, The Mr. Mortgage Show. There's a video pinned at the top of that page that explains uh, the foundation for my argument that we're not in a bubble. Absolutely, prices got uh, expensive in a hurry. Appreciation certainly outpaced historical appreciation. And we're going to need a pullback and we're going to need a flattening to allow time to catch up to itself. But um, for so many reasons I go into in that video, Um, you'll see that I don't believe the bottom is going to fall out of this thing. So I just share all that to encourage everybody to exhale. There is certainly some things to be aware of, and we're going to dig into those, but definitely not a monster hiding in the shadows. That's going to, that's going to come out and steal your dreams. You just need to be aware of what's going on. We're going to arm you with the best information that we can to help you make the decisions you need to make to continue to move forward. And the reality is depending on Uh, what the market is, you might need to adjust strategies a little bit, but overall real estate has always made a lot of sense and we'll dig into why. So speaking of digging in, I'm going to throw it right over to Dom. Um, I know we have uh, questions already queued up, so let's just dig right into your questions. We have one that we missed last week. Kate texted us. What would you recommend people do who are looking for starter homes right now and are trying to save with skyrocketing rents and home prices that make home buying unattainable? Thank you. 
Hey, uh, and Kate, I want to say thanks again for that. And I did catch up with Kate via text after the show a little bit, but I wanted Dom to include that in today's questions because I thought it was super important. So Kate and I did exchange a few back and forths regarding this. And for the first time home buyer, there are some down payment assistant programs out there. And I encourage everybody to start there. If you truly are in a position where you have the credit, you have the income and you're lacking the down payment. Um, and also to, I'll throw this out, but I want to stay on, on down payment assistance or what we call DPA for a minute. But if you have the ability, parents, relatives, employers can always gift you the down payment. Many, many first time buyer programs allow for that. But back to Kate's question and where we went with the answer last week um, after the show was the DPA programs, down payment assistance. So I encourage everybody to start there. There's some great programs out there. Now, they're a little tricky, and by tricky, I just mean they're not always available to everyone. It most often has a lot to do with how much money you make compared to the median income for your county. And most of the DPA programs are facilitated on a county level. So what you'll wanna do is search your county, go to Google, type in your county, and then down payment assistance programs. And I know Virginia has a Virginia home buying program. In Florida, there is the SHIP program and a um, great place to start. So Google down payment assistance program and make sure you put your county in there because then you'll get the direct contact information. Outside of that, I shared with Kate a new program that I'm super, super excited to talk about with all of you. And if you know somebody who's in this circumstance and they're able to afford the property from a, a monthly payment standpoint, and they've got you know credit their credit actually to, for this program doesn't even have to be great but they need time to save a down payment there's a new program that allows you to lease option the property and what's super cool about this program is you can go out there and pick the property that you want so if there's you know a house that you saw on zillow that you love and you'd love to live there this program allows you to identify that property now they come in and they do an inspection and they make sure it meets the needs, but they'll buy it for cash and lease it back to you. And you have up to three years to buy that property back as the lease option to go ahead and exercise that option. And we talked about that a little bit last week. We had a question, uh, can't remember the gentleman's name, that shot us a question regarding um, doing a lease option with his landlord. This is very, very similar. So it's super cool. You go out there and you pick the property they approve the property you they put the contract on the property they put a lease option in place with you they close on it for cash and they give you up to three years to exercise your option and it's a predetermined appreciation amount so and i'm happy to talk anybody through this who has questions and i'll encourage you to give me a shout off the air so we can walk you through it but uh it's an it's an amazing program for somebody who, who knows where they want to live they can afford to live there right now and they just don't have the down payment or they don't have the ability to receive that via a gift from friends or family they can do this lease option so also too one really cool part about this particular program is a portion of your monthly payment goes escrow to your future down payment usage so each month, if and I'm just going to use round numbers, and it's all property specific. But let's say you pay two grand a month, you know, two or three hundred dollars of that per month will go into an escrow account that you can use for your down payment later. So super, super cool program. One more option that's now available, and then we have up to three years to get you mortgage ready. So we're approved to use that program. I'm happy to do it with you. Happy to answer any questions that you have. But within that 36 month um, time period. When you're ready, you can go ahead and buy that property. And here's probably one of the coolest parts about the program is if for some reason you choose not to buy that property, you can walk away with it, walk away from the property with no further obligation and get your um, escrowed savings, if you will, back. So super, super cool program. It's a lease option program that we now have available. We can help you utilize it. Um, we've got the approved agents on the roster that can go ahead and write the contract on behalf of the lease option company and then we have three years to get your mortgage ready so hopefully that answers questions i know kate threw that out last week and i just wanted to kind of address all that to get us started this week so you hear the music that means dom's bringing us into a break we'll be back in two minutes to dig into more of your questions again my name is mark itell and this is the mr mortgage show
Hey, it's Mark Itell here, host of The Mr. Mortgage Show. And you've heard me talk about the valuation tool that we use in our lending practice almost daily. It's not quite an appraisal, but it's way more accurate than one of those online estimates. And we're happy to run one of those reports for you at no charge. Just visit freevaluereport.org. That's freevaluereport.org. Give us a little information about the property and we'll be happy to send you your report. That's freevaluereport.org. Here's another five-star review. My wife and I own a small business. And the way our accountant file our taxes, we don't show much income on tax returns. Because of this, it looks as if we don't make the money. This was a problem for our bank when we applied for a mortgage. But not for Mark. He verifies our income by using our monthly bank statements. Mark and his Mr. Mortgage team made a big difference for me. Yes, I am happy to recommend Mr. Mortgage Mark. It's not every day that you need an appraisal, whether it's for a divorce settlement, estate planning, or maybe you're appealing a tax assessment, or you just want to make sure you have adequate coverage in your property insurance. When you need a certified appraisal, turn to my friends at soflappraisal.com. That's soflappraisal.com. Peter and his team have been appraising properties here in South Florida for decades. soflappraisal.com. And tell him you heard this on the Mr. Mortgage Show. Our inflation and everyday expenses eating into your retirement income? Maybe you've considered a reverse mortgage and have unanswered questions like, do I still own my property? Can the bank kick me out? What happens when I die? Can I still leave my house to my kids? These are all great questions. Visit www.moreaboutreverse.com to learn more. That's www.moreaboutreverse.com www.moreaboutreverse.com Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now, 561-291-8569. All right, we are back. My name is Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. And yes, please, please shoot us your questions, 561-291-8569. That's the Anytime Hotline, 561-291-8569. And one more time for the people in the back, 561-291-8569. We'll get your questions on the air and get you the answers that you need. Also, too, I know we've already got a couple coming in via the email, so I'm super excited to see the activity this week. Thank you, guys. In the email, you can find that question submission on the Internet at www.mr.mortgage. That's mr.mortgage. And you heard me talk about the video um, library on the Facebook page. That's The Mr. Mortgage Show on Facebook. So got all of that housekeeping out of the way. Now you know how to find us with your questions. And uh, speaking of questions, let's keep this party rolling. I'm going to throw it over to Dom. I know we had one come in, I think, via email. Yes, John just emailed us. I think we're ready to start looking for a house, but I'm nervous that the market is going to crash. Do you have any advice? Hey, I do have some advice. Um, Just do it. (laughs) I think... The reality is that, and, and again, that this is the perfect question to reinforce sending everybody to that video on Facebook. Um, I don't think the market's going to crash. I do think it's going to slow down, um, but I don't think it's going to start going in reverse. You know, when you're going 100 miles an hour and you slow to 40, it's a significant difference, but you're still moving in the right direction. And I kind of feel like that's where we are. So, John, I'm going to encourage you to just go ahead and do it. And I want to share a quick, quick story to... Um, reinforce this, if you will. Most of you know, I started in the mortgage business in 1999. And since then I saw, I've seen a lot of swings in the housing market, but none more dramatic than the bubble of the early 2000s. So I've been thinking about this circumstance a lot lately because of all the questions and the similarities in certain aspects of today's market. So I revisited a client who purchased a property in 2005. And I'm not going to mention anybody by name, but I do want to share their story because I think this kind of, this is going to speak to John and everybody who's nervously on the sidelines. So they paid $382,000 for a townhouse in the summer of 2005, arguably the tippy, 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 tippy top of the bubble in their neighborhood. I mean, when the bubble burst, the the neighbor's house sold for $180,000. So they were $200,000 upside down when that house sold and they were the highest comp in the neighborhood for over a decade. And this, this couple, thankfully they liked the house. They stayed in the property. Um, and long, long story short, 17 years later, 
that property is worth over a half a million dollars and they own it free and clear. So my point in that, in sharing this story is simply that even buying at the very worst time you ever could have bought, and this was in Florida in Palm Beach Gardens, in one of the hottest markets at the highest peak of the bubble, time heals all. And the very cool part about it was they never paid more for their mortgage than they would have for rent, which I thought was super cool because what that tells you is that if they chose to sell that house, they no longer want to live in gardens, they're ready to move on. They could have rented it out because they're not going to sell it and lose 200 grand. They could have rented it out and allowed somebody else to get them where they are today, that half a million dollar equity position um, in owning that property free and clear. So I share that not because I think that we're going through that same cycle, but simply that even worst case scenarios in real estate with enough time on your side and proper management of debt, proper management of equity along the way, you're going to be in great shape. Um, in this case, 17 years later, they, they have a half million dollars free and clear. And all they did for that was go home every night to a home they liked and they made the, a, a monthly payment equivalent to or less than they would have been renting it for. So I share that story just for all the people out there like John who are hesitant. Yes, you know, it's it's anytime you buy a home, it's scary. I mean, I bought my first house for $64,000 and I was scared to death. So I just gave away my age. But anyway, yes, it's scary. But I encourage you, John, take that leap. If you have any questions about that, give us a shout, 561-291-8569. And that pushes to my office during the week. So Hopefully that answers your question. I'm always open for deeper conversation on that if you need additional info after the show. So let's keep the show rolling. I'm going to throw it over to Dom for another question. George is asking, is it possible to get a mortgage on a mobile home? It's a double wide if that matters. Hey, George, that's a good question. Um, so yes, it is possible. It's absolutely possible. Um, during COVID, there were restrictions in lending called overlays. And what an overlay is, it's a temporary guideline, if you will, that restricts or, or modifies some of the loan programs. So during COVID, some of the loan programs for mobile homes were no longer available. And um, some of them were only allowing double wides. But the reality is a single wide mobile home or manufactured home, you can get a regular mortgage on the property VA, FHA or conventional. There are some caveats, right? So it has to be at least newer than, I think it's June or July of 1976. So I use the rule of thumb 1977 or newer to play it safe. Um, and then the other caveat is you have to own the land. There's a process that, that happens when you put a mobile home or manufactured home, double wide, triple wide, single wide, whatever, on a piece of property where you can now make it real property. It's now permanently affixed to the land. It's no longer titled. It's now deeded as an affixed home, if you will, like a permanent home to the property. So you have to own the land and um, that's the, that's the caveat. And then the age of the, of the uh, physical structure needs to be 1977 or newer with those two things. It's highly likely that you can get conventional VA or FHA financing on that. So if you have any questions, give me a shout. I know in this rapidly appreciating um, housing cycle that we're in, a lot of people are turning to manufactured housing as an affordable option. So it's a real thing right now. And it's crazy to think some of the more desirable locations, people are paying two and three, three hundred and fifty thousand dollars for some of these manufactured homes. So it, it's a real opportunity right now and happy to help you with that, George, if you have questions. So I'm going to keep this train rolling and throw it back to Dom for another one. Here's a text from Ken. What is the minimum credit score for a first time buyer? Hey, Candace, that's a great question. So um, th it varies, right? All the different programs have different minimum credit scores, but, you know, uh, and some of them leave it up to the lender, right? So like for a VA loan, technically the VA does not have a minimum credit score requirement. However, most lenders who fund VA loans do require a 580 credit score. Now, some will say 550. But the reality is, I, I mean, I personally haven't had much luck below um, 580, and usually it requires a, a slightly higher down payment. Um, I'm sorry, in the case of FHA, a higher down payment and then a higher interest rate. So here's the rule of thumb at the moment. And sometimes these fluctuate a little bit depending on market demand, meaning if somebody wants to bring more FHA 
um, paper, if you will, or fund more FHA mortgages onto their portfolio, they may drop it. So for a while, everybody was at a 620 threshold. So FHA typically is 580. VA, while there's no published minimum, is right now a, kind of the same, 580. Um, the reality is with a 620 or higher, you've given yourself a broader opportunity of program. So I hope that answers your question. Um, FHA and VA are looking for somewhere around a 580, and then 620 kind of opens up some additional programs for you. So hopefully that helps, and I'm going to keep it moving and throw it to Dom for another one, see if we can squeeze in another question. Jill sent this question. Are there any loans for buying a fixer upper? This will be our home, but it seems like buying a house that needs work may make sense. Yeah, that's a great question. So yeah, there are a lot of loan programs that will actually incorporate the renovation of um, the home into the purchase. So great, great question. So to answer your question, yes. Um, and I'm going to go through them rapidly and encourage you to follow up with me if you have more questions. So um, Fannie Mae has a program called Homestyle. Freddie Mac has, I think it's called Choice Reno. And then FHA has a 203K program. Uh, both VA and USDA do renovation loans also to 100%. So great, great um, idea, by the way, looking at some of the um, less desirable homes that might need a little bit of work in this market to get your foot into that home ownership and enroll some of those reno costs into the loan program. So yeah, let's talk offline about that if you have more questions. 561-291-8569 is the Anytime Hotline and I'll be happy to answer those questions. So you hear the music, that means we're gonna take a short break. We'll be back in two minutes for more of your questions. My name's Mark Itell. This is the Mr. Mortgage Show and we'll be back right after this. Hey, it's Mark Itell here, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. And you've heard me talk about the valuation tool that we use in our lending practice almost daily. It's not quite an appraisal, but it's way more accurate than one of those online estimates. And we're happy to run one of those reports for you at no charge. Just visit freevaluereport.org. That's freevaluereport.org. Give us a little information about the property and we'll be happy to send you your report. That's freevaluereport.org. Here's another five-star review. We started our loan with a different company. They said we were approved, but at the last minute they told us there was a problem. I still don't know what went wrong, but thankfully our real estate agent told us about Mark. I was pretty stressed, but it's the perfect house so we gave Mark a shot. He got it done. I'm not sure what was different, but I don't really care. We even got a better interest rate and with less money out of pocket than the first guy quoted us. It was a great surprise. Yes. I'm happy to recommend Mark and his Mr. Mortgage team. It's not every day that you need an appraisal, whether it's for a divorce settlement, estate planning, or maybe you're appealing a tax assessment, or you just want to make sure you have adequate coverage in your property insurance. When you need a certified appraisal, turn to my friends at soflappraisal.com. That's soflappraisal.com. Peter and his team have been appraising properties here in South Florida for decades. soflappraisal.com. And tell them you heard this on the Mr. Mortgage Show. Are inflation and everyday expenses eating into your retirement income? Maybe you've considered a reverse mortgage and have unanswered questions like, Do I still own my property? Can the bank kick me out? What happens when I die? Can I still leave my house to my kids? These are all great questions. Visit www.moreaboutreverse.com to learn more. That's www.moreaboutreverse.com www.moreaboutreverse.com Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now, 561-291-8569. All right, we are back. My name is Mark Itell. This is the Mr. Mortgage Show, and Dom and I do this every week right here. Same bat time, same bat channel. So thank you so much for your questions. Um, I know I rushed out of that last one a little bit, but to answer your question, yeah, there are a variety of loan programs that will allow you to acquire a property that uh, currently needs work and you can roll those renovation costs into the loan. So I think I, in those last 15 seconds, I spit out four or five of them, but I'm happy to go into further detail on those. Um, just give us a shout, 561-291-8569, and uh, we'll dive deeper on that for you. So. Uh, always keep those questions coming. If you can't call or text, you can always visit the website, www.mr.mortgage. 
That's Mr. Dot Mortgage with no dot com or hit the Facebook page, uh, the Mr. Mortgage show on Facebook. So in the spirit of answering your questions, I'm going to give the mic back to Dom and see what we have teed up. Vincent left this message for us. If I get a reverse mortgage, can I rent my home out later if I move in with my daughter or an assisted living facility? Hey, Vincent, that's a really, really good question. And it, again, if you're a listener of the show, you know that reverse mortgages are close to my heart. I think they are an amazing product for the right people, but not the right product for everyone. I always caution you with that. But yeah, wonderful product. And I'm ha- always happy to, to take the time to answer these questions. So um, no, technically, no, you can't rent your property out um, if you're going to move into your daughter's house. And, and here here's the stipulation, right? So if you vacate the property for 12 months or more, the note can be called due. So what they don't want to have happen is the property to be vacant or in this case to be rented. Um, if you go into a facility for rehab or you're in the facility for less than a year, but you're coming home, that's not a problem. But the way I understood that question, if you're going to be moving into a facility or moving into your children's house for a long period of time for care, then that's going to be an issue. There are some caveats to that, right? So if the um, reverse mortgage is on your primary and you have a second home, um, you can be in the second home for up to um, uh, not quite six months. So you need to be six months in a day in your primary. So if you're bouncing around the world and traveling and you're out of your property for six months, that's fine. As long as you meet the requirements of primary residency, which is six months in a day, you can do that. But if the if the reason you're out of the property is because you're in a, an assisted living or in care uh, with your children for the, the next step, if you will, um, you've entered that phase, then you're going to, you're going to want to sell the property or, or pay the note off. Um, I hope that answers the question. I know that's a big concern for a lot of people and there's no prepayment penalty. There's no limitation on you selling the property. Um, they just don't want you renting it out. And I did, I'm sorry, I touched on this and I skipped past it. There is a caveat. You can rent out a room in your property for additional income for what they call border income. If you wanted to do that, um, but you can't, you know, quote unquote, rent the property out and then go move um, into an assisted living facility. Uh, it, unless you're going to be in the assisted living facility for less than a year and you're coming back to the property. I um, hope that answers the question. I really feel like we need to kind of deep dive that. So I'm going to encourage you to give us a call at 561-291-8569. And again, that pushes to my office during the week um, when Dom and I are not in the studio. So Vincent, let's have a deeper conversation about that. But to answer your question, typically you're not going to take a reverse mortgage and then be able to rent that property out. Um, great idea. It would be awesome if you could do that because you're double dipping the income on the property. But um, yeah, most likely not going to happen. So uh, let me see what we have. Uh, Dom, do we have any additional questions? We do. Melvin just sent us this text. Melvin's asking, we are going to call your office for a refinance, but I'm curious to know how much debt we can pay off in the refinance. Hey, that's a great question, Melvin. So um, I'm going to throw some math at you, right? And typically what's going to happen is you're going to um, be limited by your loan to value. So some programs limit you at 75, some at 80% loan to value. So if you had a million dollar house, you could borrow $800,000. And then let's say you have a $500,000 first mortgage, that would leave you $300,000 to pay off your debt. So I hope that helps. So look at your home's value. And then if you want a really good indication of value, I encourage you to call us or hit that website that we set up called freevaluereport.org. That's .org, not .com, freevaluereport.org, and just type in your address, and we'll email you back the full report, and it'll give you a really good idea of value, and then you can do that math. Just take 80% of that number and uh, subtract your current first mortgage or second first and second mortgage, whatever liens are on the property, subtract that, and that cash balance is going to be what's left to pay off your debt. So I hope that helps. On some of the larger properties, because I did throw a million dollar example out there for a reason. Some of the larger properties, the loan programs will, they'll cap how much you can take out. So in that example of 75%, I want to share a win of the week, I guess is where I'm going with this. We had a really cool experience this week. We had somebody whose property was worth um, 1.75 million 
and they had a little over a half a million dollars um, of an existing loan. And they want to pull three quarters of a million dollars out of the property uh, for another opportunity. And that puts them at a 75% loan to value, which is a low loan to value as far as risk ratio to the bank. So we were able to use a program that we call Jumbo Flex. And we were able to, and I want to brag on this, and I really want to brag on my team. It wasn't me. It came through the office and our, and our team handled it. But 1.75 was the value. So every lender was capping the cash out at a half a million. Well, this this individual needs three quarters of a million dollars to capitalize on this opportunity. So we used the guideline exceptions in the flex program and with a 75% loan to value that put their loan amount at 1.3. We paid off the, the, um, it was actually 1.3. I'm going to do this from memory. One, one million three hundred and twelve thousand five hundred. I have it in front of me and we paid off 562 five. So they walked with, um, 750,000 cash out, which nobody could pull more than a half a million out in cash. So I was super excited about that, but that's a situation when the property values start to get up there, you may be limited to how much cash you can pull out. And we were able to accomplish that with an adjustable rate mortgage that kept their interest rate in the fours, which was pretty phenomenal in, in this day and age. So super excited about that. I hope that answers your question, uh, Melvin. And I'm super excited that you're going to call the office because I'm looking forward to walking you through that. But yeah, use your property value times 80% unless you're pulling more than um, a half a million dollars in cash out, then you're going to want to use that 0.75 or that 75%. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, I'm going to throw it over to Dom and see if we have another one. We do. Emma wants to know, you just talked about a lease option program. Where can I get a list of these homes? Hey, Emma, thanks for that. That was fast. Um, yeah, so that lease option program, they do have some currently owned properties that are available. And as I mentioned, um, with that program, if you choose not to exercise the option, you can just walk away after the lease period. And some people do that. They get a job transfer. They have... Um, another child, they need a bigger house for whatever reason during that 36 month period, that home ne- no longer met their needs. They were able to move on and, and take that savings escrow with them. So there are a few homes, but where I'm going with this is the really cool part about it is you pick the house, just go on Zillow, um, go on realtor.com, give us a shout. We'll get you in touch with some agents who are really, um, good with this program and they have the resources but you pick the house and typically they want it to be a single family home. They're not looking for a condo. Um, but yeah, you pick the house and if the house meets the uh, guidelines and your income and credit score meet the guidelines, boom, you're done. So I encourage you to give us a shout five, six, one, two, nine, one, eight, five, six, nine, and let me get you the information you need on that program. It's a fairly new program. It's fairly new to us. And it gives us that 36 month window to get you mortgage ready. So Emma, to answer your question, there's not a list, but I can give you, not a big list. I can give you the list of the current properties, but um, the really cool part is you pick the property and then uh, they buy the property and lease it back to you. So hopefully that helps. But as I mentioned, I'm happy to give you all the info you need at 561-291-8569 is the best way to reach me or visit the website, www dot mr dot mortgage never ever a dot com just type in mr dot mortgage we'll be back right after this hey it's mark i tell here host of the mr mortgage show and you've heard me talk about the valuation tool that we use in our lending practice almost daily it's not quite an appraisal but it's way more accurate than one of those online estimates and we're happy to run one of those reports for you at no charge just visit freevaluereport.org that's freevaluereport.org give us a little information about the property and we'll be happy to send you your report that's freevaluereport.org Here's another five-star review. We kept our business above water with credit cards during the pandemic. I'm glad we did. Business is better than ever. But I didn't want to be a slave to those credit card payments. I called Mark about the REC loan he advertises. Long story short, we did a REC refinance and paid off everything, even the car. Now we only have the mortgage payment. We're saving a bunch every month. Yes, we are happy to recommend Mark and the Mr. Mortgage team. 
It's not every day that you need an appraisal, whether it's for a divorce settlement, estate planning, or maybe you're appealing a tax assessment, or you just want to make sure you have adequate coverage in your property insurance. When you need a certified appraisal, turn to my friends at soflappraisal.com. That's soflappraisal.com. Peter and his team have been appraising properties here in South Florida for decades. soflappraisal.com. And tell him you heard this on the Mr. Mortgage Show. Are inflation and everyday expenses eating into your retirement income? Maybe you've considered a reverse mortgage and have unanswered questions like, do I still own my property? Can the bank kick me out? What happens when I die? Can I still leave my house to my kids? These are all great questions. Visit www.moreaboutreverse.com to learn more. That's www.moreaboutreverse.com. www.moreaboutreverse.com. Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now, 561-291-8569. All right, you heard the man, 561-291-8569. That's 561-291-8569, 561-291-8569. I finally have that memorized. That is the Anytime Hotline. And uh, yeah, call or text your questions there. And uh, keep in mind that that uh, that pushes to our office during the week. So you're always able to get us via that number or visit the website, www.mr.mortgage. There's never a .com, just type in mr.mortgage. Or all of these cool, fun facts and statistics and videos that you hear me reference during the show, you can find those on the Facebook page, which is The Mr. Mortgage Show at Facebook. Just go up in the upper left-hand corner and uh, search The Mr. Mortgage Show and you'll find us. So, yeah, let's keep it rolling. I really want to say thanks for everybody shooting their questions to us. There have been some good ones this week, and hopefully we've got some more good ones teed up. Kyle did send us this one. He's asking, I'm self-employed, don't show much income, and my bank said no. Are there any loan programs that will work for me? Hey, Kyle, I love it when the bank says no. I don't love it for you because obviously that's the easiest place to start, right? And most people start there because the bank has all your information and they're not going to ask you for bank statements, right? You already have them there. But um, to answer your question, yes, there's there are many, many, many programs available for self-employed borrowers. And... It's interesting. I had this conversation this week at um, at my office and right down the hall from my office is probably one of the best um, CPAs that I've met. And Pete and I were talking and it's funny because sometimes we're doing business with our doors open and I'll hear him in there talking to his clients. And I've never, ever once heard one of his clients ask him, hey, Pete, do my taxes in a fashion that I'll make sure I qualify for a large mortgage amount. <laughs> They always say, hey, Pete, do my taxes in a way that I'm going to pay the fewest uh, or pay the smallest amount of uh, taxes. So you have a good CPA like uh, like I'm talking about. Well, in that instance, you're not going to show all the income necessary most often to um, qualify for the mortgage. So until you go in your CPA's office and start asking them to uh, make you mortgage ready, you're most likely going to use a bank statement program. Um, And we have a variety of them. We can use your business statements, your personal statements, sometimes a combination of both. There are programs that will look at as little as the most recent 12 months of statements or the uh, most recent 24 months of statements. And basically what is happening is we're taking an average of your deposits. We're looking for consistency. We're taking an average of your deposits to determine a uh, monthly income. And then depending on the field that you work in, there's a multiplier that is um, applied to the particular amount. So if you're a contractor and you're buying a lot of materials, then obviously, you know, a big chunk of what you're depositing in the bank each month is going out for materials or additional labor. But if you're, let's say you're a consultant and you work from home and your work product is your, the intellectual production of reports or, or, or data an, uh, analytics, you are going to have a, a much smaller expense ratio applied to that. So there are even some um, 
uh, situations where we're using 100% of personal bank statement deposits for employment. So to answer your question, I wouldn't get hung up on the no. Give us a shout. There's a ton of programs available, and maybe we can work with one of the bank statement programs to get you qualified. But uh, yeah, 561-291-8569 is the Anytime Hotline, and you can catch us there during the week too. So hopefully that helps. There's most likely an opportunity there for you. Just get with a broker who has the bank statement programs available and we're happy to help with that if you give us a chance. So thank you. Uh, and I'm going to throw that right back to Dom for another question. Stephanie just called us with this one. We're looking at a house near downtown. There is a cottage on the property that is rented. Can we use the rental income to help us qualify for the mortgage? Hey, Stephanie, that's a really good question. And, um, I don't know exactly what downtown you're referring to, but in a lot of the older neighborhoods, there are um, existing out parcels or, you know, a a detached garage or a mother-in-law suite or something that over the years became a cottage. Um, From my hometown in the West Palm Beach Lake Worth area, it was very common for there to be an out outbuilding on the property that was, you know, in the closer you get to Palm Beach, they were servant quarters or not. Yeah, I guess servant quarters or uh, the maid quarters. Um, but as you got out with the rest, <laughs> at the rest of us, we called it a mother-in-law suite. But um, yeah, so to answer your question, you can use that income. There are some um, prerequisites that have to be met and some protocols, but um, typically that rental income from the cottage, and you may hear that cottage referred to as an uh, accessory dwelling unit or the more popular kind of catchphrase is ADU. Um, everybody likes to use the initials. So an ADU is an accessory dwelling unit, is a cottage, is a detached rental um, unit on your subject property. And it's treated differently than like a duplex, but yes, you can use that uh, income in most cases. And depending on your credit score, your down payment amount and your loan product will determine how much of that rental income you can use to qualify. But a very, very safe rule of thumb is going to be um, 0.75. So take your income and 75% of the annual rent, and that will um, add those two numbers together. And that should be the income that you're using when you're um, going through your debt to income calculation. So I hope that helps. I know there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of that ADU happening out in the California area. They cha- recently changed the zoning uh, for single family lot minimum requirements for people to add ADUs. And if you're ever online and you're bored, Google Boxed, I think it's called Boxed or Box Box Homes. And there's a company that actually created a very cool concept where they deliver an ADU or a cottage and a mother-in-law suite as a flat. It comes off the tractor trailer and it gets uh, dropped on the property and then the walls stand up and the roof stands up and it's all inclusive and it's it's ready to go. And the cool thing about that was that very shortly after that company launched, they were like, you know, 12, 24 months back ordered already. And I think it had something to do with that California zoning law that was changed. So um, anyway, not that not that everything that happens in California is cool because they do have a tendency to overregulate in some some areas, but I did think that was interesting as there's such a demand for housing in some areas that they did loosen up the zoning requirements to allow for those accessory dwelling units to be added on existing properties, or they're taking detached garages and adding a second story to it and turning that into an above garage apartment. So super cool. There's an opportunity there. And yes, you can use that rental income. Um, unlike the DSCR loan where you can use a hundred percent of the rental income because that's just treated purely as an investment property. And most of the time requires a larger down payment. Um, you're probably going to be restricted to just 75% of the rental income, but I'd be happy to talk you through that because there are some moving parts to that. Again, I mentioned credit score down payment, um, that'll kind of dictate what program you'll qualify for. And then within that program, those guidelines will determine how much of that rental income you'll be able to use. So um, great that you're looking at that as an opportunity, because I think anytime you can get multiple doors, you hear me all the time talking about um, rental income, buying a, buying a fourplex and, um, you know, using one as your primary residence as a great starter option. And then you've got four doors uh, appreciating at the same time. So 
Um, hope, hopefully that answers your question. I went a little long on it, but yeah, Stephanie, you should be able to use that income. And like I said, a lot of loan programs out there right now, rental income is a, is a great opportunity um, for the DSCR program for investors. For primary residents, you can buy up to four units, or in this case, um, a detached cottage or a detached ADU being used as income uh, to qualify you. So, yep, certainly an opportunity out there. And you hear me talk about it all the time. And we'll dig into that a little bit more as the show goes on. But I want to talk about finding the opportunity in this market because, as I mentioned in the opening segment, you know, the news and the clickbait on the internet. It's just it, everything right now is doom and gloom, and it's just not. It's not the case. I mean, you need a home. You're paying rent. You might as well pay a mortgage. And um, the reality is if you're paying if you're paying rent, you are paying a mortgage. It's, it's just not yours. It's your landlord. So um, big, big props to Stephanie for looking at that property. I'm excited for you. I hope that works out. If you have questions, hit us up. But there is the music. We're going to jump into another break. We'll be back for more of your questions in two minutes. You can send those questions to 561-291-8569, 561-291-8569. Hey, it's Mark Itel here, host of The Mr. Mortgage Show. And you've heard me talk about the valuation tool that we use in our lending practice almost daily. It's not quite an appraisal, but it's way more accurate than one of those online estimates. And we're happy to run one of those reports for you at no charge. Just visit freevaluereport.org. That's freevaluereport.org. Give us a little information about the property and we'll be happy to send you your report. That's freevaluereport.org. Here's another five-star review. As a realtor, I have a bunch of mortgage brokers to choose from, but I prefer to work with Mark and his Mr. Mortgage team. In this crazy market, there is no room for error, especially on the mortgage side. Mark's team moves fast, keeps everybody in the loop, and makes things happen. They always give my clients a great deal and take the time to walk them through every step of the process. When you're considering a lender, I encourage you to talk to Mark Itell and the Mr. Mortgage team. It's not every day that you need an appraisal, whether it's for a divorce settlement, estate planning, or maybe you're appealing a tax assessment, or you just want to make sure you have adequate coverage in your property insurance. When you need a certified appraisal, turn to my friends at soflappraisal.com. That's soflappraisal.com. Peter and his team have been appraising properties here in South Florida for decades. soflappraisal.com. And tell him you heard this on the Mr. Mortgage Show. Are inflation and everyday expenses eating into your retirement income? Maybe you've considered a reverse mortgage and have unanswered questions like, do I still own my property? Can the bank kick me out? What happens when I die? Can I still leave my house to my kids? These are all great questions. Visit www.moreaboutreverse.com to learn more. That's www.moreaboutreverse.com. www.moreaboutreverse.com. Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now, 561-291-8569. All right, we are back, and that's right, 561-291-8569, 561-291-8569 is the Anytime Hotline and always the best way to get your questions to us. So um, I kind of wrapped up that last segment, you know, encouraging everybody to look past the headlines and find the opportunity and I'm super proud of Stephanie for finding um, a property with a, a cottage on it already producing income because I think that's a great, great opportunity. So I just wanted to share share this. You know, you hear me talk about it all the time, look past the headlines and fi- find the opportunity. And I shared that scenario with you where the, you know, the people that bought at the worst possible case they could have ever bought at the tippy top of the bubble in the early 2000s still made out. So yeah, the news's job is to scare us into watching for another 15 minutes past the next commercial break. So just take all that to, into consideration and, and read past that. I mean, the, the reality is the rates in the twos and the threes were wonderful, but they weren't real. They were a product of the COVID relief. Um, what, what the, the administration was doing was pumping a ton of money in and just like, you know, the quarantine and the mandates and all of the rules and the lockdowns and all of that associated with COVID, as all of that is coming to an end and we're welcoming that, right? We're looking, 
we're, we're encouraged as we're getting back to normal life. Well, those rates have to go by the wayside too, because that was a product of COVID. It's not, it's not a product of the real, the real environment. And I want to just share something with you that I think is more important. We're getting hung up on rate and rate is irrelevant in the big picture. The reality is your budget. We talk about it all the time. I, I ask everybody this who gets hung up on rate. I ask them what their car payment is. And everybody knows their car payment. My car payment's $400 a month. I love my car. It's a great car. Fantastic. What is your interest rate on your car payment? Very few people can answer that question. And they don't really care. They know $400 a month is, is what they're paying. It meets their needs budget-wise. They love the car. They're happy with it. You know what the ironic part about it that is? It's a depreciating asset, <laughs> you know, but they're still they're still happy to just go out there and base that decision based on budget alone. So when you're buying a house, what are you paying for rent? Are you paying $2,500 a month for rent? Well, guess what? For $2,500 a month, you can buy a $350,000 house with an FHA loan in most neighborhoods. So it, the, the, the interest rate's not the, the biggest part of the equation to consider. Certainly pay attention to it, but don't let it get you wrapped around the axle. And I, and I say this because every single time I give somebody a pre-approval, um, and I, I don't care if I gave the pre-approval with a 2.9% 30-year fixed rate or a 5.5% 30-year fixed rate, they want to know how much they can buy. So somebody who was approved for $650,000 with a 2.99% interest rate went out there and tried to find the biggest, the shiniest, the most beautiful $650,000 house they could find. Now, the challenge is, as things appreciated, suddenly that $650,000 price point was just a bunch of recently appreciated half a million dollar houses, and they were disappointed. They didn't pull the trigger. Well, that same person right now today, if the rates are 5.5%, in order to keep that payment the same, they're now qualified for $500,000. So it's not the rate as much as it is our expectations. Now they're super disappointed. The reality is if you can buy a half a million dollar house and it appreciates at, I don't know, let's use 5% a year because it's not going to continue at 20% a year. That house is appreciating at $25,000 a year. How hard is it going to be for you to save an additional $25,000 a year without doing any more work, without a side hustle, without saving any money? The house is doing it for you. You didn't have to cut out your Starbucks. You didn't have to forego your vacation. The house is making you money. So I guess where I'm going with this is look at your budget. What can you afford and go out there and get you, I'm going to sound like a hillbilly, go out there and find yourself the, the, the most satisfying property you can in that price range. And if it doesn't meet every, doesn't check every one of your boxes, then make it a two-step process. Okay. I'm going to buy this house. I'm going to live in this house for two years. I'm going to take this equity and I'm going to move up. And that's the reality of things. All right. So hopefully that helps. Don't get hung up on your rate. Look at your budget. The rate is, it's half the battle. It's not even half the battle. The important thing is Find a place you can afford. Look for the opportunity. Opportunity is out there for all of us, and um, it's worth taking the opportunity. You're gonna hit. You're gonna hit a home run in the long run, and we would be happy to be a part of that for you. So, any questions? Give us a shout. Five six one two nine one eight five six nine. That pushes to the office during the week, or visit the website www. Dot Mr. Dot mortgage or check out the Facebook page. We're having a lot of fun with that. We're dumping all of the videos and the reports and the data that we use uh, during the show. So you can find us there at the Mr. Mortgage show on Facebook. That wraps us up for this week. Dom and I will be back next week, right here, same time, same station. And we hope that you join us then. Thanks. That's a wrap. Join Mark Itell next week for more thrilling edge of your seat discussions about real estate and mortgages right here on the Mr. Mortgage Show.